वर्णिवे शर्मणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराज्नाज पूजित सुरनरोतमुदा धर्मनंदनमह विचित धर्मनंदनमह विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय ऑल माई डी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड और बिलोड घनश्याम महाराज पाथ में कट और लिबरेशन पूज्य पद गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ ड्यूटीज जय स्वामीनारायण भगवान स्वामीनारायण इन द ईयर ऑफ एटीन ट्वेंटी इन द अर्ली डिसम्बर भगवान वो सिटिंग इन सुराखा चर्च दरबार इन लोया एंड इन फ्रंट ऑफ हिम देर वो मैनी संतोष एंड डिवोटिस दे वो गेदर इन एन असेंबली एंड भगवान स्वामीनारायण हिमसेल्फ डिस्क्राइब द डिफरेंट डिफरेंट स्टोरीज ऑफ हिज ओन डिसाइपल्स so that by comparison one's life with the other devotees who are greater than ours we can understand that this is what i have to do to please maharaj and that is why bhagwan himself recited the stories from the life of his own devotees and one after one today maharaj is going to describe the stories of the devotee devotees by the name of ladi bai and mata ji of puj there were many thousands and many hundreds of female devotees at the time of bhagwan swami narayan when he was manifested on this earth at that time many many female devotees who worship bhagwan swami narayan singularly and many female devotees they renounce her family life family relation and after renouncing wealth property houses even palaces and they engage themselves in the worshiping of bhagwan swami narayan so when we consider the other religion in the world such kind of d- stories from the life of some female devotees we can hardly get such stories from the other religion religion m- 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 only like two or three but not more than that but in our swami narayan sampraday it is only because of maharaj is sarvopari maharaj is supreme and that is why there are several hundreds hundreds of devotees female devotees who renounce their family life and engage themselves totally into worshiping bhagwan so in such thousands of devotees bhagwan was narrating the stories of the ladiba of buj ladiba of buj was a disciple of ramanand swami she was brahmin by caste and become a widow at a young age during the time brahmin widows had to live by very strict rules they had to wear dark and thick clothes with no jewelry no any ornaments nothing they also had to cover their faces at all times and could not attend any festivals so ladibe was not direct disciple of bhagwan swami narayan but before bhagwan swami narayan came in our fellowship and at the time when ramanand swami was the head of this fellowship at the time ladibe was uh, ladibe was the duty of ramanand swami and that was before 250 years that was the days those days were very strict and people even people themselves also strictly follow the rules and regulations prescribing the scriptures as well as prescribe uh, as well as decided by the society or community and that is why ladibai as born in brahmin family but unfortunately even though she was a very young still her husband he was died and that is why ladibai became a 
we do at very young age and according to the rules of the society she had to wear a very thick and dark clothes and no ornament no jewelry and how to live a very simple life not to attend any festival or any events and had to stay in her house more than that she had to cover her face throughout the day so in this way that was the rules at that time for the widows decided by the society and after ramanand swami disappeared from this world as ramanand swami commanded all of his devotees that whoever believe in me they all have to listen my words they have to consider they, ha- they have to consider my words as my personified form and that is why ramanand swami gave command to all of his devotees that now from today anil kanthwarni or we can say bhagwan swami narayan he was the bhagwan and he was the head of our sampradaya so you are all my devotees have to support him you have to follow his each and every command because he he is even greater than me even he is greater than the form of bhagwan to whom i worship so in this way ramanand swami guided all of his devotees towards bhagwan swami narayan and that is why ladibai also became a disciple of bhagwan swami narayan after ramanand swami's disappearance and as she became a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan after that according to ramanand swami's words she had developed or cultivated unf- unflinching faith in the form of bhagwan swami narayan that there is no god besides this maharaj and that is why she always remain ready to follow each and every command prescribed by bhagwan swami narayan at once sri ji maharaj asked her if she would follow his orders she replied nothing is impossible for me to do to please you my lord you can command me to do anything and i would not hesitate for even a moment to test her determination maharaj said put on fancy rich clothing wear gold jewelry and then take two clay pots and bring water from the well when maharaj sri ji maharaj came to bhuj once for traveling and for giving pleasure to all of the devotees at the time once maharaj asked ladibai that how much faith you have for me then ladibai said whatever you give me command i can do immediately without any kind of hesitation then maharaj said okay i have one agnya for you i become very thirsty so please give me water then ladibai gave her uh, ladibai gave him a glass of water but maharaj said this is not uh, this is not actually i want the water i want water from the well and only i'll drink water only if you go there in uh, you go there to the well and not wearing this thick and dark clothes but only after wearing very fancy and fine clothes and even uh decorating yourself with the various ornaments golden jewelry and after that if you go there with the pot and fetch water from the well and after that if you will give me the glass of water then i'll drink it then ladibai said it's okay mara that's the simple thing for me then even though there was the very strict rules and the people of the village or people of the surrounding area they were very well aware about uh, ladibai was a widow she was so she had to wear very thick and dark clothes no jewelry no ornaments and still ladibai without hesitating or without thinking for the others 
she only wanted to please maharaj and that is why she decided to change her clothes and even not only that but she also uh wear some golden jewelry and after that according to Mar- what maharaj say exact way she went there to the well but the problem is that the way to the well that was that passing from the center of the town so there were many people sitting in the uh, in both of the sides of the roads so when without any kind of hesitation she took two containers and started her way to the well on the way she was questioned by the public what are up to, what are you up to have you lost your mind such kind of question uh ladi bai listen some of people even ask whom have you married at this old age ladi bai frankly replied because at the time golden jewelry and uh, such fancy clothes were only s- those women who married and on the other hand one who even married and after that after the marriage if her husband is passed away then such kind of women they have to uh, they, they they were not allowed to wear such kind of clothes and ornaments and that is why the people ask that whom have you married at this old age ladibai frankly replied in this universe i have taken innu- innumerable births i have married many times but i still have not found an immortal husband ever since i have met lord swaminarayan i have considered him to be my eternal husband he will grant me ultimate redemption giving the same answer to all who question her she finally finished her task and returned back to maharaj with the water so maharaj wanted to test her faith in in his own form so whoever asked ladi bai according uh, whoever asked ladi bai various various questions but to all ladi bai gave the same reply that i i have married bhagwan swaminarayan as my eternal husband otherwise the person on this earth they were all mortal but bhagwan is immortal and that is why i selected bhagwan as my eternal husband in this way she replied everyone and finally when she came back to her resident and she gave a glass of water to maharaj maharaj became extremely pleased upon her maharaj asked her if anyone had made remarks along the way she explained what had happened to maharaj shri ji maharaj became very pleased with her behavior and so her with blessings so when maharaj asked her that is there anything happened in the way then ladibai replied yes maharaj many people ask me that whom have you married at this old age but i have no fear of anyone and that is why i boldly said that i have married i selected bhagwan as my eternal husband and by giving this reply i came back with the water so after listening even this reply and drinking the water not by the, not only by the drinking water but even maharaj tested her faith in his form and she passed maharaj examination and that is why maharaj became extremely pleased upon her so one can earn immense blessing by bhagwan by following the commands of bhagwan or his son and one should not hesitate in obeying bhagwan's command because if we follow bhagwan's command then he will become extremely pleased upon us and if bhagwan become pleased upon us then we will enjoy his real form his real glory and his real greatness and by understanding bhagwan's greatness we we will enjoy bhagwan's bliss like like that of the bliss in the aksardham so this is what bhagwan swaminarayan himself narrated in the assembly in loya ladibai story that 
see even renounce public ridicule as bhagwan mentioned in the vachanamrit third as he described the described the definition of a person who has faith in the form of bhagwan and after that bhagwan also narrated the stories of mata ji who was mata ji Jamkuba was the queen of Udaipur in Rajasthan in India once from her palace as she was the queen so she even today the Udaipur palace was situated in Rajasthan and that was the uh, there was there were very few palaces in India right now situated and even one of the biggest palace in India that was the udaipur palace and in that palace even several story palace and in that palace the queen jamkuba at the time resided and even today <coughs> there are royal families even today they lived in half of the palace and for the half of palace they were open for the public as a museum so that was the one of the biggest state at the time in india and this udaipur very rich and that is why even we can guess how how was the wealth at the time with the king because even today if we visit the palace then we can we cannot even some so, uh, some kind of task we cannot understand that how at the time they held such kind of techniques or uh, technologies or such kind of uh financial position that they can build such kind of palace and they even uh buy such kind of paintings or many jewelries and many other things in the palace so that was the palace of jamkubai and once from her palace as the behind the palace there was the lake and in the lake there were two brahmins they were getting bath in the morning and while they were taking bath at the time they were chanting bhagwan swaminarayan's name swami narayan swami narayan swami narayan and this swami narayan maha mantra listened by jamkubai in the palace so when you were she heard the voice swami narayan then by merely listening these words swami narayan she experienced some divinity she experienced complete peace within and that is why she understood that this is not an ordinary words this is our uh, some divine words and so she sent her men to that brahmins and call them in the palace she inquired that who are you from where are you and what is this word you are chanting when the queen asked them who they were where they came from and what were they chanting they replied they came from gujarat and were chanting the swami narayan maha mantra so when the queen jamkuba singh queer about the brahmins the brahmins replied that they were from gujarat and there was bhagwan swami narayan who is the supreme god and manifested right now as a human being and he was situated in garuda in southern part of gujarat and uh, this is his maha mantra swami narayan so we are chanting his maha mantra while doing all activities while walking while eating while taking bath or while sitting and because of chanting his holy name his holy maha mantra we can get peace within and we can experience divinity throughout the day so so that we can chanting his name continuously then the queen desire to know 
much more about Bhagwan Swami Narayan, so the devotees, the Brahmins, they were ready, they were ready to explain everything about Bhagwan, and one after one, one after one, they started to narrate the life stories of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, various different kinds of uh, episodes from the life of Bhagwan, and after listening those divine episodes from the life of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, Chamkubai. As she was the queen, so she was very intellect, inte, uh, intellectual person, and that's why she decided this is Bhagwan himself. Otherwise, merely by chanting his name, I cannot feel immense peace within myself. And not only that, but such kind of divine episodes only happen because of Bhagwan, not otherwise. And that is why, as merely by listening Bhagwan's divine episodes. She decided this is Bhagwan himself, and she cultivated in her mind that this is Bhagwan, and I have to meet him. Anyhow, I wanted to meet him, but the problem is that as she decided to decided to meet Bhagwan. In Gujarat, but being the queen, she was aware that the king would not let her to go. She made a plan to flee. As she was the queen, so if she desire, she expressed her desire to go there in Gujarat only to meet Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Then the king, he was not a religious person, so that's why he was not allow her to go there in Gujarat for meeting Bhagwan, and that is why she decided. I do not want to remain in this palace. I want to renounce all this palace, all these luxuries, wealth, and property, and everything. I do not want to even remain engaged in this social life. I want to renounce all these things behind, and I want to meet Bhagwan. Now, according to her plan, she was aware uh, about the king, and that's why one dark night she made a rope with her saris. And tied one of the end of that rope to her balcony, and climbed down and disappeared in the cover of darkness. Next morning, the king ordered his soldiers to to track her. But meanwhile, she was very far from the palace. When she heard the horse steps from the distance so she knew about she guessed that maybe the soldiers and if she caught by the soldiers the king will not allow her to leave in her even palace she definitely would descend to the dev but bhagwan always there to protect her devotees who want to meet him Or even who wants to walk on the path of God, Bhagwan always help those people, and in the same way, Bhagwan also help Jamkobai. When she heard the horse steps, she hid herself in a filthy, stinking skeleton of a camel. There was a camel near the river. Uh, the dyed camel, and so she decided that if I hide myself in into this skeleton of camel, then no one came here because there was very, very, very wrong order came out from that skeleton, and that is why she decided to hide herself in skeleton, and that is why. uh when the soldiers they came but they understood there there would be no one here because of this bad order and say, uh, all those proceed further and that is why uh after the soldiers they gave away but still she had to stay there for some times because the soldiers they have the search mission and that is why they might come after one hour or two hours or maybe at night or maybe 
at any time. So that is why she remained there for three days and three nights in this skeleton of the of a camel which has very very bad odor and after third day as while staying there in skeleton she looked on the way that the soldiers they went back towards the palace so after that she came out from that skeleton and proceed towards the Gujarat but the problem was that she did not know where is the Gujarat where is Kadpur nothing that is why first she took a bath in the river and after that she proceeded towards the way on opposite side from the palace now after some distance she passed and she met a Brahmin who agreed to help her on the way the Brahmin offered some food what he had brought with him to her the Brahmin he was no one but Bhagwan himself took a form of Brahmin and helped Jamkubai and as that Brahmin offered some food to Jamkuba then Jamkuba said no I did not I do not want to take anything because I have decided first I get darshan of Bhagwan in Gadda after that I'll take some food or water then the Brahmin he explained that in our scriptures it is written that one who has darshan of such a pious Brahmin then one should understand I have darshan of Bhagwan and even you do not believe that then it is written in the scriptures that one should follow one's elders agnya or one uh, or elderly brahmin's agnya so if you follow these rules then that's good for you then that was the bhagwan himself so bhagwan is able to give uh, give his own idea to the others and that is why uh, Jamkubai became ready to eat and Bhagwan gave her some food and water and after that because of the long journey she was tired and felt asleep soon early morning when she woke up she found herself on the bank of a river where some women were chanting Swaminara and Swaminara while taking bath so and and the brahmin was not there because that was bhagwan not a brahmin so bhagwan with his divine power put jamkubai's body on the river on the bank of the river gela in garda so when in the morning she woke up she listened again swami narayan swami narayan swami narayan because this time some female devotees they were taking bath in the river and they were chanting Bhagwan's name. So she asked those women that I uh, what is this place? I want to meet Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So please guide me towards Bhagwan. Then all those female devotees they were from uh, they were from the disciples of Bhagwan and that's why they uh, guided Jamkubai that this is Gatada and here in the Bargad in the town there was Bhagwan Swami Narayan and you can get his darshan. In this way all these female devotees they help her to have darshan of Bhagwan. So after getting a bath in the Kela river uh, she took a bath there and dressed newly and went to the Darbar with the woman uh, where Sriji Maharaj was seated and she got a darshan and she was delighted very much by having the darshan of her beloved Bhagwan, much more in Bhagwan Swami Narayan who praised her immovable faith and devotion. So after getting Bhagwan's darshan, Bhagwan knew all these things, all this, all this incident and because of his omniscient power. But Bhagwan at that time did not announce in the assembly. So Jamkubai also did not 
introduced herself as the queen of the Udaipur. And on the other hand, Jamkubai ex- uh, introduced herself as not not the queen, but an ordinary woman, uh, ordinary female who desired to have the son of Bhagwan, nothing else. And after that, Bhagwan asked some question to Jamkubai and uh, Bhagwan listened her wish and Jamkubai uh, expressed that Maharaj, I want to live with these female devotees here and worship your divine form throughout my life. I do not want to go back to my family. And in this way, Bhagwan after that, Bhagwan gave her initiation and gave her command to stay there with the female devotees like Jeevubai and Ladubai. And Bhagwan gave them command that please appoint her, her according to whatever seva you have. Then uh, Jeevubai and Ladubai, they both appointed Jamkubai for the seva in Gausala for cleaning the cow dung and everything. After many, after months and more, when Bhagwan again visited that Gausala and Bhagwan asked, who cleans this stuff? Then someone said, Maharaj, that female devotee who came before a month and you command us that uh, Please send her some seva. Then we have appointed her here in Gausara to cleaning all this cow dung and all the other dirts. Then Bhagwan said, No, this is not a good. Uh, she was not an ordinary woman, but she was the queen of the Udaipur state. So immediately after this incident, uh, Bhagwan himself, he, he commanded commanded to Jamkubai that uh, nowadays you are initiated as such with uh, the same labor as the Jeevubai, Ladubai, the other female devotees, other female renounced devotee and that is why Bhagwan gave command her to wear a simple red cloth and uh, named her Mataji because Bhagwan said she was the queen and according to our scriptures, the king is considered as the father of the public. And that's why we can consider the queen as a mother of all. And that is why Bhagwan named her Mataji and gave her command to stay in Bhuj with Ladibai. So this is what the story Maharaj narrated in Loya of Ladibai of Buj and Mataji. Mataji was no one but the queen of Udaipur whose previous name was Jamkuba and after renouncing all his palace, luxuries, wealth, everything behind and even stay for three days and night in skeleton of a camel and even after that much hard work she, when she Got darshan of Bhagwan. Then after that, Bhagwan and the other elder devotees they send her the seva of cleaning the gausala or cleaning the cow dung and other dirts from the gausala. Still, without any question or without any hesitation, she remained to do all this kind of t- stuff to please Maharaj. And that is why Maharaj narrated here her story in the Vachnamrit. By listening and by reading the incident from such kind of devotee's life, we can only understand we are not doing anything to please Maharaj. If we want to please Maharaj, then we have to even accept all kind of opportunity to do seva and to do please Maharaj with all kind of particular tasks we are given to. In this way, Maharaj narrated here the stories, much more stories, even Bhagwan narrated in the Vachanamrut. We will continue it later. Jai Swami Narayan Sri Ganeshyam Maharajani Jai Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadevishwaram Bhaktidharmatmajam Vasudevam Hari
ಮಾಧವಂ ಕೇಶವಂ ಕಾಮದಂ ಕಾರಣಂ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣಂ ನೀಲಕಂಠಂ ಭಜೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜ